um, this week and uh, previous, I'd been looking at Thessalonians. So I thought, well, I'll look, I'll look at that and see um, what God has to say. But I kind of went into Thessalonians, and then, as always, I got carried away, and, and I just felt that the Holy Spirit was saying different things. Um, so I'm going to share them this morning, and um, hopefully it will encourage somebody. Um, I did start in Thessalonians. As we know, the author is Paul. Um, it was written in the early um, 50s AD, possibly Paul's earliest letter. Um, well, he was on a second missionary journey, and in it he taught that Jesus will return to gather his followers to him. And thank goodness that he did do that, because we still hold to that truth. We know it to be true. Um, First Thessalonians teaches us in 5.16, rejoice evermore, and in 5.17, pray without ceasing. And it was interesting that when Maureen was leading us in the worship, that you were bringing in the the importance of praise and and to praise and worship. So uh, I think we might be on the right page today. Um, Paul's message was to to live a right life because Jesus, Jesus is returning. Um, that's putting it in all very quickly, basically. And the same is true for us today, that Jesus is returning. We don't come to church just because it's part of a, a habit, a thing that we do. We come because we want to hopefully hear from the Lord. We want to praise God. We want to worship. And we want to fellowship together because when we fellowship together, we can grow together. And um, we saw Heinz and Doreen earlier. And... Um, I came as a young child, had a little bit of time away, and when I came back, they were here. Um, And they've been a wonderful encouragement. And sometimes when people get older, they think, oh, you know, they start, the world starts to tell people, well, you're not as useful anymore, and that now you need to quieten down, now you should uh, relax and and not do as much, which is probably true, maybe relax a bit more. But in the things of God, the wisdom and the knowledge that older people have gained is so important for young Christians. And um, I've benefited being in a church that's had wonderful older people. And they've been a real encouragement. They, they've um, encouraged me. They've been a blessing. And more importantly, if they think that you might be on, off track slightly, they, they're not worried to tell you. They're more interested in you getting right with God than they are in pleasing you by what they say. And I think that's a wonderful gift that they've got to offer us, the wonderful wisdom and knowledge and encouragement. And it's wonderful that we're in God's family. We've got young and we've got older people. Um, so we thank God for Heinz and Doreen and for all the other people that have already gone to be with the Lord that we've been blessed by. Um, Steve, could I have that first um, image up, please? This is how I get distracted when I'm reading scripture. The Holy Spirit sort of takes me off and I sometimes go for a walk and I do all sorts of things. But I don't mind because it's just the way that it is. Uh, no. <laughs> the, the box, image one. Okay, so we see... Uh, this Jessica sent me this for a very good reason. One thing that nobody ever talks about being an adult is how much time you debate to yourself on keeping a cardboard box because it's like a really, really good box. <laughs> now, most of us can relate to that, unless we're super minimalist and super strict with ourselves. Um, I know Diane is really hot on this for a good reason. Diane likes a really good box put the food parcels in. Um, But it's just, it hit me that sometimes there are things that nobody ever talks about. Things that we do, things that are habits, things that we need to do, just because we've got into that habit of doing it. Um, Now I can relate to that, and I think by your laughter, I was going to say hands up if you can relate to that, but I think by the laughter everybody can relate to that. I sometimes have a gift, and I look at the gift and think, oh, it's wonderful. But I do look at a box sometimes and think, oh, it's wonderful, because I can think of other things to do with it. Now, it's good if you're genuinely going to recycle the things you keep. But if you keep a box just for the sake of keeping a box, 
and hanging on to things, that's not very good. I don't think it's very good. Um, and it, it just reminded me that what we do is that we do hang on to things. We hang on to sometimes belongings, and I'm in a process of clearing out lots of things. And it's hard sometimes to look and think, do I really need it anymore? Um, I did see where it said you're encouraged to take a picture of the thing because then you've got the picture on your phone and you can keep that. But I thought, oh no, my phone might fail. So there's still a way to go yet for me. I haven't got too, too much, but there are lots of things that I need to sort out. Um, sometimes we hang on to memories. And good memories, I think, they're, they encourage us. So that's probably good to remember good memories. But if you've got memories of troubled times or really, really bad things that have happened in your past, you don't want a box to store those in. You don't want to store that up in your life. You want to be able to let that go. And becoming a Christian, you find that you're able to talk with God. And I found, um, I did in my past, where people said, give it all to God now. And that became overwhelming. Um, and I don't know that I felt necessarily great trying to give everything to God all at once, because there are some things in life You've got to try and work through and let the Holy Spirit just show you, sort this out now. And so memories you can sort out with God. Could be just a small thing even from your past that is just kept there, that is hindering you in your walk. And it's good to, to turn to the Lord when he encourages you to and just let go of some memories. Um, bad memories are better left with the Lord than kept in a box with us. Um, habits, um, we've all got different habits. Some of us have got hobbies that can just become a habit in the end that we overdo the hobby. Um, and some of us have habits that we would rather not have. Um, so that's another thing that we can hang on to, that we can let God touch. Grievances, and that's a difficult one because sometimes if we've had a grievance, mostly it's a genuine thing that you've got a good reason to feel a bit awful about it but God teaches us and the Holy Spirit draws us to forgive to feel what we feel and yet still be forgiven and move on and let go of that um, and that, that creates a healthier um, balance in life for us because unforgiveness can cause lots of problems in relationships and it can also cause health problems as well. We're blessed that God sees us as a whole person, the Holy Spirit sees us as a whole person and that everything we do uh, is important to God and that giving, giving up on forgiveness and just thinking, well, you know, this is how I feel. I don't feel as if I've forgiven, but I'm going to behave like I've forgiven. I'm going to act as if I've forgiven. I'm going to bless that person as if I've forgiven. And you find then that some of the most awful things that you thought, well, I can never forgive that, that you just find yourself living a lifestyle of forgiveness so that you don't hold it in and it doesn't damage you as a person and it doesn't hold on to your life and your health. Um, so we can get rid of unforgiveness. Um, and I just want us to think, just for a moment, if we pause, and think if there's anything in our lives that we are hanging on to, um, anything we've collected new that we want to just give to God. Um, because if we do hang on to things, like I've said, it hinders our walk. And I think sometimes we need to talk about the reason we hang on to things. Because this is a, it's a laughable statement nobody ever talks about as an adult. Keeping a cardboard box because it's like a really, really good box. And sometimes the way we protect ourselves can seem like that really good box that we protected ourselves and cushioned ourselves in something that we've manufactured ourselves. So it's good to let go of that. God can and does provide, and it's okay to let go of things. Um, Psalm 55, verse 22 says, Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. 
And that's a wonderful promise that if we do our part in trying to get things um, sorted, he's true to his word. Um, could I have the next image, please, Steve? That's the birds. This is a um, photograph that Jessica sent me. She managed to snap it in her mother-in-law's garden, and I loved it. And I've kept it on the phone. I'm glad I did, because when I was reading in Thessalonians and um, was thinking about being hungry, I remembered this. And um, it's so beautiful. And that little fella is hungry, and he knows if I cry out, I'm going to get fed. He's learned that. He knows that. Because by crying out, he's going to get fed. And it's a beautiful um, picture to remember that if we're hungry, that we cry out to God. All of nature cries out to be fed. And from God, we don't just, we don't just cry out that we have our daily food, our daily bread. We cry out because we need more. We need that spiritual um, well-being, that spiritual food. Matthew 6:26 says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Are you not much more valuable than they? And sometimes we don't feel as if we're valuable. Sometimes we, we're Christians and we, we still don't truly believe that we are valuable. And it doesn't matter what we're like, we're invited into God's presence. And we have a Heavenly Father that is longing to feed us. He's longing to give us all the good gifts and all the blessing that he's got for us. And all we've got to do is cry out to him. And that might sound, for some, you don't know what my problems are, you don't know what I'm going through. But I do know that if you cry out to God, he feeds you. And... um, Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. And thank goodness we know that God is true to his word, so that if you cry out, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be fed, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And in doing so, you'll, you'll be lifted up and you'll hopefully be lifted out of your problems. And we need to be hungry for God's presence and cry out to him. And sometimes it's good to go to other people. It's good to go to others for help. John, over the years, has been a Maureen, a fantastic help to me. Spiritual help and advice and encouragement. And um, I don't think that I would be the same me here and now if it hadn't been for that support and that commitment. Because it takes real commitment to walk a long way with people if they've got things to sort out. Um, And some people give up. They don't see the results happening quickly. They might give up on you. But thankfully, John and Maureen didn't give up on me. Thankfully, God hasn't given up on me. He still makes me look in the mirror, and I look, and sometimes I think, oh, I don't really like what I see. And that seems a strange thing to say, but we know ourselves, and we know the things we still got to work at. We know the things we still need to do. We still need to turn to God, to be hungry for God's presence and to cry out to him. He knows my needs. He knows your needs. And it's, um, he's not a distant figure that you've got to be afraid of. You can enter into God's presence. And we've had a beautiful time of praise and worship. And it enables um, the atmosphere to change. And if you're worshipping at home, you've got time to just carry on with that worship and you can just enter into God's presence and allow his blessing and the Holy Spirit to pour over you and bring healing. I'm always hungry for God's presence. And I hope that above all things, I never stop crying out to God that I need more. And it's, it's not a greedy thing. You can have as much of God's goodness as you can ask for, and more than you can ask for. Um, So it's good that we continually let the Lord know that we're hungry for him. God delights that we want to be in his presence. Could I have the next image, please, Steve? I 
And this is, um, I went for a walk and I was feeling not particularly good. Um, it wasn't a particularly bright day, it was a bit stormy. Um, I still took the dog out and uh, that's a good thing about pets is they don't complain. <laughs> you can take them out whatever the weather. Um, but I saw this and took it and it, sometimes you take a picture then it's not till later you look at it again and you see the same thing that you saw but then you can see deeper into it and I saw this and um, it's what I call my stormy rainbow because uh, it wasn't a particularly great day um, but the, the rainbow just happened to look as if it touched the top of the bow tower because this is an angle from um, the meadow. Um, and it, it's been a beautiful reminder that even, even in an, a dreary and difficult day, there's promise and everything may look bleak, but God's promises remain. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to keep hold of. On days when things do seem bad, when life's pressures are getting to you, you can look for something beautiful and be reminded of God's promises. As I said, it wasn't a particularly nice day. I wasn't looking particularly for anything that would stand out and that was beautiful and happened to catch sight of that. And now I can see that it's beautiful, more beautiful than I at the time thought so. Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. A strong tower in ancient cities was a place people could run to when facing danger to find safety. And that's why this is particularly important, this verse. Because it's not just a strong tower to look at. The name of the Lord is a strong tower that you can run into. You can run into God's blessing. And there's a strength to be found in that because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And it's good when we can say, the Lord is my strong tower that I can run into him when I'm going through troubles, when I've got difficulties. I can run into his presence, and it's a strong tower. And the enemy can't touch you in those moments because you're safe in God's presence. And whatever you go through, you can run to the Lord. He's bigger than all your problems, worries, and sins. And I think most of you already know all this. Um, his mercy is for you. But sometimes we forget to include ourselves in the truths that we know and we beat ourselves up. You can be a leader, John won't mind me picking on you. You could be John and John will have days where he thinks he's not good enough. John will have days where he thinks I can't do this. John will have days when he thinks I don't really understand this enough. And yet we all look at John and think he's doing great. Look, we want to be like John. We want to have the same character that John's got. We want the strength of Christian character that John's got. And we see John differently to how John would look in the mirror and see himself because we look in the mirror and we too often beat ourselves up. And we need to start encouraging each other more and more we do. We're fortunate in this church that we do. But we need to encourage people because the Lord is bigger than all our problems, all our worries and our sins, because sin is there, even for Christians. There are moments when sin can step in um, and it can just be a, a wrong thought, it could be a wrong action. We need to act quickly and run to that tower, that safe place, run into the Lord and just say, I need your help, Lord, and take safety in the name of the Lord and cry out to him and he'll help you through your difficulties. It's, um, it's a wonderful thing that everything we struggle with that holds us back, um, all the things that the enemy would choose to use against us, um, he can't actually stop us. We, th we sometimes think he can, but he can't. Because there's nothing for those that are in Christ that God can't sort out. Jesus has won the victory. He is Lord. He is victorious. He is our strong tower. And it's marvellous. It is a fellowship. He is our strong tower. And together as a fellowship, we can run in. To, together as Christians, whatever fellowship we're from, we can run into that strong tower. 
I repeat again that Matthew 5 verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Righteousness seems out of reach sometimes, but righteousness is is something that's attainable to Christians. And we have the promise of the Holy Spirit, our teacher, comforter, friend, our guide, and with more blessings than any box could contain. We store up that stuff in the box and think this will keep this safe and that this is what I want to keep. But if we let the box go and we just open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit does teach us, and sometimes we don't realise the Holy Spirit is teaching us because we think that's just life, that's just what's happening, that's just something that person said. But at the root of many things that people share with you, um, the Holy Spirit has inspired something in somebody else and got you in the right place, the right time, for that moment, for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. He's your comforter. Um, A couple of years back when I was feeling really poorly, the Holy Spirit, at night, I would just put on some instrumental music and the presence of the Holy Spirit would see me through the night. And it didn't matter if I hadn't been to sleep because I was so rested and so at peace in his presence that I felt great the next day. Um, He's our friend and our guide. He wants the best for you. He wants to draw out the best in you. He, He sees the best. He doesn't look for the worst. And who knows what God can and will use us for, the more of the Holy Spirit that we have. Um, I was also looking at um, about Leonard Ravenhill. I'll be honest, I don't know very much about this guy. He was born in 1906 and he died in 1994. 1907, actually, which makes it seem such a long time ago. But died in 1994 kind of brings it back to... That's not all that long ago, really, for some of us. Um, He was a Christian evangelist, and he was described as an old-fashioned prophet. So when I hear that old-fashioned prophet, I think, oh, he he wasn't a people pleaser, because um, a prophet is honest with what God gives them. But also, if he was old-fashioned, then he's definitely, God was first. He wasn't going to sort of mince his words or butter it up to make it sound better for people or to be polite. He was a prayer warrior and and a preacher of truth. Now he said, maybe you are the key to revival in your church. And when I read that, I thought, oh, what a thought. That maybe you are the key to revival in your church. And that's not me, it's us. Maybe you are the key to revival. And sat here this morning could be somebody that is the key to revival in our church. And that made me think, well, this is really good, really promising, that if we carry that truth, that we play a part in revival happening in our church, in our town, and if we play a part, we won't mind if it's another church that it happens in first, but we play a part in revival in our town and in this place and that if we all take that and that's the sort of thing to keep hold of that i can play a part in revival happening um and it kind of when you really grasp it and chew over it and i encourage you to do that over the next few days it kind of makes me feel um really positive i don't know how to explain it but i was really blessed by this because i thought oh yeah, you know, we've got loads of people that they may be the key to revival. We, in fact, are the key to revival. Um, If we really want revival, um, a move of the Holy Spirit afresh, we need to believe and pray earnestly. Um, And it seems rather a lot to attain, but with God in Christ, all things are possible. And with the move of the Holy Spirit... So if we keep praying for our church, our town, and our churches in Evesham, because we do need revival, we desperately need revival, even in our own lives. Um, And it's good to start with yourself. And we've got people, again, Edward, I think, is our oldest um, intercessor. 
And I've, I've known Edward walk the streets for hours and hours, praying and praying and walking the streets, and he's made the difference. And there will be a time when, when he sees that difference that he's made. And that lives and families have been changed because of Edward's commitment to prayer. So we've got revival on the way, and I'm going to be bold to keep saying it. Revival is on the way. And we're going to have a move of the Holy Spirit, and it will come crash you. I've said this before. Um, I had a vision where we, it was this end of the church, and it was like huge waves and rushing water crashing through and crashing up against the walls and, and cascading down. And in this um, picture that I had, it, it was just like, quickly open the doors and let it out because it was too much to contain. And I believe that when I had that vision then, it's the same now, that when the Holy Spirit moves and there's a revival, it will be too much to contain within a church. And we will just pour it out into our communities, and that's what it's about. Um, and we, we need revival. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, We live by faith and not by sight. So begin, begin believing for overflowing. We are people of faith. All things are, pot- are possible because the battle has been won. And that's something that we sometimes forget, that the battle has been won. And we're blessed in that because we've got a head start. In fact, we've, we've already reached a finishing line when you think about it. It's been won already. And um, we just have to carry that truth, that promise, that blessing. And I started looking at Thessalonians, and you can see that I've, I've gone off a long way from that when I was at home. But I don't mind, because I believe that God just gives us what he wants us to share. If it blesses somebody today, that's good. If not, I've done what I felt was the right thing. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 says, Rejoice evermore. And 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. Whatever circumstances, rejoice. Pray without ceasing. And run into that safe tower. And we have a promise... The rainbow represents that wonderful promise that things will never get that bad again as it did in the flood. And so we just ask you, Lord, for our community that for this church and each church and, rep- and community represented, Father, we look to you. We look to you for refreshing. Father, we look to you for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Father, we need a revival in your people so that we can do that work that you've set ahead of us, Father. Give us the courage, give us the confidence, give us the energy that we need, Father. Wake up your weary people, Father. We need feeding, we're hungry for you, Lord. Desperate to do your work, Father. We ask that you would bless us, Lord. In Christ Jesus' name. And we've got a song to, you can either sing to it or listen to. Um, and just while you're singing it, remembering that the battle's already been won, that all things are possible because the battle has been won. And if you've got anything that you want to speak to anybody about, then there are people here that are willing to speak to you or pray for you. Um, It doesn't matter what situation or what circumstance you're in. We're happy to do so. And we've got John to share something. Just before the song. Is that all right? Um, a lovely message this morning. I felt when Paulette was talking about the boxes that, that God wanted to just say something to one of the two of us. And we kind of have mechanisms where we protect ourselves. Different ways, maybe anger. Or, and you could call them boxes. My box used to be, I don't matter. So if somebody hurt me, I would just say, it's okay. I don't matter. And I could kind of cope with it. But eventually you can't cope with it. And, and I just, if God spoke to you in that way this morning, I just want to pray a prayer of release. Because there's freedom when we're in God's presence, isn't there? And God's presence is here. So let's just pray, and then I'll hand it back. Father, you know the way that we collect stuff. And we try to protect ourselves, maybe even at times when we never knew you, by certain things that we do certain ways that we react to to kind of protect ourselves. And we want to be vulnerable to you today, Lord. 
And if there's some way that God's spoken to you about this morning, I want you just to bring it to him. And I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus and just cut you off. Lord, I want to thank you first that as you enabled me to bring that box to you of I don't matter, that you set me free and caused me to know what you think. And I just come now in the name of Jesus and I just cut you off from whatever that box is that you've been using to help yourself. Because the only help is Jesus as a strong tower. And I'm going to pray into whatever that box was, as God sets you free from it, I ask your Holy Spirit that you will come into each life, and particularly where this is relevant to somebody, right now, just receive the Holy Spirit into that area that was hurt, into that area, that mechanism. You're going to have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Just let his peace flood your soul right now. Just from him, just receive from him. Just receive more of the Holy Spirit. Let him heal that wounded heart. Let him place his peace where there was turmoil. Peace where there was anger. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing. Amen.